Hi everyone, my name is Philip and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be installing a Bitcoin full node on Ubuntu 22.04. If that's of interest, you're in the right place. Why would you run a Bitcoin full node, you ask? Because you can't make any money from it. Nodes don't get paid. Uh, I do it purely because uh, it's an interest of mine as a crypto miner and also the more nodes there are, the more uh, stable and secure the network will be. Setting up a Bitcoin full node is something I've been thinking about for a while, but um, I don't want to spend too much money on it. I originally thought about using a Raspberry Pi, but by the time I looked into the cost of getting the Raspberry Pi and an SSD and then getting a case to put it all together, I realized I could get a secondhand computer with everything I need. So that's what I did. I bought a little uh, secondhand HP ProDesk with a one terabyte SSD in it. Let's start with the requirements over on Bitcoin.org. Bitcoin.org is the uh, official repository of the full Bitcoin node software. So it's currently August 2022 and it lists the disk requirements as being 350 gigabytes of disk. My full node is currently using 451 gigabytes of uh, disk to store it. So uh, I think it's growing quite a bit since they wrote the guide. So you can see really a 500 gig drive isn't going to be enough. Um, and also the Bitcoin node is very IO constrained. So personally, I would, uh, wouldn't would do this unless you're prepared to get a one terabyte SSD to run the Bitcoin node, otherwise it may struggle a bit. Okay, the requirements say it's gonna, you're gonna download about 500 meg a day or about, and upload about five gig a day. For me, I find it tends to run closer to 100 gigabytes a day, and that's nearly all upload sending um, data to other Bitcoin nodes. Uh, the specs say you need a gig of RAM. I personally feel this is quite light. Uh, I'd recommend having four gigs of memory um, to uh, run a node. Um, now the uh, software is mostly IO constrained. Initially when you do your download, it does use quite a bit of uh, CPU. It only seems to use one, maybe two cores, but once that one-off download is done, it uses almost no CPU. My node's got uh, both a Bitcoin node and a Ravencoin node running, but you can see the Bitcoin node is just sort of floating around five to 7% most of the time, uh, and that's running on a little uh, low-powered i3. I'm gonna put uh, a summary of all these steps uh, below, but uh, let's move on to installing it. So I'm running Ubuntu 22.04 uh, server with a minimal install, so it's got no GUI. Um, you can choose to use Ubuntu Workstation with a GUI, it'll make no difference. Bitcoin.org is the official uh, repository. Um, we're gonna do a modern Snap-based installation of the client. Um, I haven't really found very many good instructions, so hopefully this will walk you through the process. Once you've got your um, base Ubuntu installed, SSH into it, and then just go through all the normal steps you would do before you install anything new on Ubuntu, which is where you update the system. Uh, I'm gonna go into super user mode because we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff as root. Uh, so you know, you know, you do your normal apt update, apt upgrade. Uh, so this one, node's already been set up, so I'm just, some of the, everything's already been done on this one. All right, now we come to the snap install. So you just simply say snap, install, Bitcoin, or, and it'll go ahead and install it. Uh, some of the reasons I like using the snap is because uh, when the Bitcoin core gets updated, you can simply refresh your snaps and you get all the updates. Uh, otherwise you will have to manually download the client and change your running system each time there's a new version that comes out. Now snaps actually run in a change root environment, so they're pretty secure. But because uh, I'm a bit old school, I like to have a, run it as a separate account. So let's add a, a new group to run it as. Create a group called BTC. Um, and then we'll create a user, uh, add them to the BTC group. Use the bash shell. My user already exists. Um, and then we're going to spend most of our time running uh, as that new user from now on. Okay, so we're going to run the actual daemon once now just to create some directories. So you just type uh, bitcoin or dot uh, daemon. I won't run this because I already have it running it. You hit return, it'll run for a little while. Um, hit, and then maybe leave it 30 seconds and then hit control C to stop it running. Okay, now the files have been created. We'll change in, we'll have a look at the config file. Um, so snaps uh, get 
all configuration for snaps gets stored in the user's home directory, which is our user uh, BTC. So we'll just say we're in a CD. Uh, snaps always get stored under uh, snap, and then the snap name, which in this case is Bitcoin Core. Um, files that are common, such as config files across all versions, get stored in a common directory. This becomes the uh, effectively the user's home directory in the um, change root environment. Um, the Bitcoin Core itself stores all its config files in a directory called .bitcoin. Now there's really nothing you must configure in the comp file, it'll run just fine without one. Um, otherwise, um, I've created an example file here. Now it should be called bitcoin.conf, um, but I've uh, created a sanitized version of my one. So in my particular case, uh, I'm not really very familiar with Tor or using Onion addresses, so I've turned uh, Tor off. Um, I don't use, uh, the Bitcoin Core can also be a Bitcoin wallet, but I don't wish to use a uh, public node for my wallet, so I, I explicitly turn off all wallet functions. Um, and then here you can specify uh, additional memory to give for caching to the Bitcoin node. Uh, I've got plenty of memory in this node, so um, I've given it uh, two gigabytes. This is the number of kilobytes. Okay, so if you've made a config file, then um, uh, do a Bitcoin core um, dot daemon and just uh, manually run it one more time. Leave it running for 30 seconds and um, um, make sure it starts up and there's no errors and then hit control C. Um, there is a debug log you can look at. So you can go tail follow, uh, it's in the BTC users directory and a snap, Bitcoin common, uh, sorry, Bitcoin core common uh, dot Bitcoin and then um, debug.log and um, so this shows you everything that the daemon's doing. Um, it'll do, uh, when you first run it, it'll spend a lot of time downloading and um, you'll see this little uh, progress here. Uh, so that means it mine's 100% up to date, but yours will start off being 0 .000 something and over the next, uh, I found it took me three days to sync the database. Uh, and so it'll slowly build up and this log will be scrolling very fast uh, while it's doing uh, that. Okay, now we know it's running. Now we'll set it up as a uh, system D service in Ubuntu to, uh, so it'll run every time it starts. So we'll just type exit and pop back to root. Um, and we're going to create a new system D file and etc. system D system. Uh, I've called mine Bitcoin D dot service. Um, once again, I'll put this in the comments below, but um, that's basically what you need. Description, we don't start it running until after the network is up and online. We run it in our, our, our uh, separate user account BTC, so if it gets compromised, it can't really, uh, well, it's in a snap, so kids can't have trouble escaping anyway, but that'll constrain it even further, running it as a user. And uh, basically, it runs as a normal forked, um, Damon, uh, sort of nothing too much else interesting there. So once you've created your file, uh, save it off. Once you've created your service, um, you'll need to tell um, System D that there is a new service there. So you'll run a command, uh, System CTL Damon reload. Um, uh, you want to tell System D to um, boot, run your node every time the computer boots up. So you say System CTL enable. Bitcoin daemon dot service, and then uh, a couple of commands you can do is tell it to start the daemon right now. The Bitcoin D dot service, it'll start it running. Uh, you can stop it running with uh, stop. Um, you can ask for the status using the status command. System control status Bitcoin D dot service. So what you want to see is it says it's active and running. Um, Another, uh, if you're having problems, another debug command you can use is um, journal ctl minus xeu bitcoin d dot service. That'll print out uh, a log of recent things that have happened. So if you're having problems, check then. You might, you might be able to see an error. And don't forget that um, debug log we mentioned earlier on as well. Um, now that log file uh, can actually get uh, quite large. Um, so I actually use the log rotation daemon um, to uh, keep it under control. So uh, let's see, my previous week's one was 9.7 megs. The current one at the moment is only 334 kilobytes. After you've done your first sync, though, it'll 
it'll get quite large. So what we'll do is we'll set up the log rotation daemon to keep this log under control so it doesn't eventually uh, fill up your disk. Okay, so to set up the log rotation daemon, we're going to edit a file under etc. log rotate.dbitcoin d. Um, now I've put this, I'll put the contents of this below as well. But basically, uh, we say for this log file, uh, always running as the user and group BTC. Um, simply rotate the log using whatever your system defaults are. Uh, so that one's all pretty straightforward. Um, so once you've got that set up, um, you need to um, uh, tell the log rotation daemon to pick up its new um, uh, file. So we're just going to tell it to, or new configuration, we're going to ask the system to restart the log rotation daemon. And then um, uh, if you get any errors, you have to go back and check things more carefully. We're just going to ask the, for the status of the log rotation daemon. And what we want to see is that there's no errors here. So this is basically saying it's happy and it's running, going to run on a trigger. Okay, we've got everything set up now. Let's do some general checks. Let's change back to running as our restricted uh, BTC user. Um, so uh, all the commands always start with bitcoin-core.cli. So the first one we'll do is .netinfo. Um, now I'm just going to chop the output a, a little bit because I don't want it. Um, that will normally output your IP addresses and stuff. Um, so here we can see uh, inbound and outbound connections. So that all looks good. And the next command you can use is once again the CLI is get network info. I'm just going to prune the output a little bit, um, but you should see uh, lots of information about connections and all sorts of stuff here. Get blockchain info is another uh, command you can run that tells you information about the uh, Bitcoin blockchain on your version of the database. You can see things like difficulty and its reported size on uh, disk. Uh, and another useful command you can use is get pair info. Um, it shows you about all of the more detailed information about all of the connections. I won't run that because that one exposes a lot of uh, IP addresses. If you are having errors and things that aren't working very well, don't forget you can always look at that uh, debug log and uh, just check for errors or things going wrong there. And if you want to keep a handle on the disk space being used uh, as reported by the uh, OS, I just use the disk use command. Minus H says give me human readable numbers. So it just gives you nice prefixes. So you can see my main Bitcoin directory is 451 gigs. And uh, of that, the blocks uh, subdirectory is 447 uh, gigab gigabytes. I hope that walkthrough of what are the, the steps to get a, a Bitcoin Core node uh, snap running was um, helpful. And uh, the more nodes we can get running, the better. I'm going to leave some um, links around the uh, edges of some other videos that you might find interesting to watch.